Hello, everyone, and welcome back to E20 Zone TV, the place to be on YouTube. -y. Um, West Ham Neil, Dim Mozagreb won, and the youngsters done us proud tonight. Uh, I'm joined all the way from Maryland in America. Lucas, how are you doing, sir? I am feeling great. Um, you know, it really feels good to lose and not have any repercussions. Mm. 100%, mate. Uh, yeah, like, let's get straight into it, Lucas. I thought, really, there was lack of cutting edge up front, but with all the other sort of players, like all the the, the whole of the defence, no one made any glaring errors for goals. The goals are yeah. stunner, isn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah, it was a worldie. Yeah, it's a great goal from a man who destroyed Tottenham and um, Arsenal when he played them before. Yep. But, yeah, like, for me, I just I looked at it tonight. Um, the, there's two people who stood out for me tonight, and I'll see if you agree. I will say one. Uh, let's see if you say the other one. The, the first one for me is a no-brainer. It's uh, Harrison Ashby. I thought he was absolutely, yeah, that's a bit of me. It's, um, it's hard, for me, it's hard to, it's hard to really pick because I thought, besides Baptiste, who was not bad at all, he was mm. – he didn't really have much to do, but I really thought um, all three of them were really good. But I was going to go with Elise and Longello. I really, I thought Elise was a man mm. mountain tonight. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I'm just not convinced on Elise. That's the only one I'm not really like. It's horses for courses. It's whether or not you like him or not, really. But um, yeah, for me, Harrison Harrison Ashby looks he the nuts. Great. Yeah, every great. time, forward thinking, crossing balls in, he's touch in the first half. Ball, he, he takes the ball out of the air. I'm like, bruv, this guy's is next level, mate. Honestly, I don't know what he's... they're doing with the academy with the fullbacks, but Longello and Ashby, mm. their forward runs were absolutely bombing. They were yeah. brilliant. Longello, I must admit, I, he's the other one who I thought was like tip top tonight. Um, and it's important with him because we have we've only got one left back at the club, and yeah. he he come in and done a good job, mate. But uh, what's your thoughts on the game, Lucas? You know, you know, if you you take away that worldie, I mean, we probably should have came away with the draw. Really, um, I did yeah. make sure. I mean, of course, I was. It was nice to see Vlasic for me personally. I thought he was close to he was close to my man of match. I thought he was re he was pretty good today mm. um but i was really focused on the back four and you know they were very tidy harrison ashby and long are super positive players which is like nice to see and they they showed good first touch oh, that one that one long run where he just bombed down the flank and then played that pass into four nows i thought mm. that was absolutely brilliant before he got mm. fouled um but at least i thought he was pretty good and then Baptiste, I mean, he's only 17, 18 years old. So, but I mean, for, for his age, playing against a, not a European giant, but a very well respected European opposition who played mm. their, played a strong lineup. The only, the only player Zagreb were missing was uh, their number, was their striker. I can't pronounce his last name, the big lad. Uh, yeah, but Petkovic, I think his name yeah. is. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I thought we played him pretty well, and um, the future seems very, very bright. And even um, even Forsen when he came on for whatever minutes, he got a few touches, but he looks mm. agile, quick thinking, which is nice to see. And Freddie Potts, nice to see a lifelong supporter get in there. Would you make a Sonny Perkins today? I thought he was okay, but he just, he just, uh, how can I put it? He was. I don't think he had a lot of. Yeah. I don't want to say a lot of help, but I mean, you can only do so much when. I mean, Yar. I I really think Yarmolenko is just about finished here. Personally, <laughs> um, he's he hundred percent finished, mate. He, I heard what the uh, over here that the commentator said, right? And I'll never forget it. I think it was a uh, Ashby. I think it was or Longello. Someone played a ball into him, and. Uh, he goes, uh, Yarmolenko likes it to feet, and the ball was only about <laughs> five yards away. Was it, goes, was it the second half? That, yeah, the second, second half. half. 
Yeah. That went out for a goal kick. That's the one. Yeah. I was like, I, I thought like, the same it, thing. I was like, that was not that bad of a pass. I thought Yarmolenko should have gone to that. Mm. But I mean, Yarmolenko had a few signs of of brilliance, but I mean, he's just done here. And you know, Vlat Vlasic. I mean, and to be fair to both of them, like they're playing with a bunch of youth, so mm. like they're not on the same page. But <sighs> Sonny Perkins probably did as as much as an eighteen year old can do against a team like this in the Europa yeah. League. And I mean, people got to remember he is a newly converted striker. Practically, mm. he mostly plays out on the wing. Mm. But I thought he, I thought he was all right. But I was really, really impressed with the back line today. There was only like one or two mistakes that I can count, and there was that that one Ashby Baptiste collision that almost led to a goal. But after that, I thought they were all very, very impressive. Mm. What about a crowd today? I thought he was okay. A um, couple of times he got spun like a good one. And, uh, very that's average. A very, very, yeah. very average. Um, again, I, was, I don't. I was I worried really there, Lucas. Yeah, I don't want to put too much, too much on like the the senior players just because they're playing. They played with how many mm. youth guys say five? Five, yeah, five. But I don't know. Crawl was incredibly average. He did get spun a few times. Mark Noble was all right. Mm. I thought he quarterbacked the midfield decently. But, I mean, again, it's hard to judge a, judge a team with five youth players in there and then just a bunch of fringe first teamers and then, like, one or two guys trying to break into the first team. So, I agree. I agree. Um, at the end of the day – at the end of the day, it was one of them. It was one of them games where it would be nice to see the boys sort of score. Um, yeah, but it's just one of them, really. Do you know what I mean? Just at least at keep... the end, almost poked one in. Almost. Nathan Johnson disagrees with you, though. Nathan jo- uh, Johnson says West Ham need to get Flassage out of the club, Lucas. You, uh, Nathan, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. It goes a long way. But um, for me. And you know how I feel about Flassage, right? You said earlier on you thought he was the best player on the pitch. Uh, I've got to disagree with you, brother. Really? <laughs> yeah. I Who thought was he was over. Match? For me, I liked Ashby today, mate. I think Ashby come in today and Longello, the, the pair of them, and I, I love that, them flying wingers up and down each side. I did as well. Um, if I was to go through the whole game, Yarmolenko ain't worth a toss. Um, Perkins tried, but. He was a little bit. I don't know whether he was starstruck. Not a lot of just, service. Yeah, not a lot of service. I thought Fournell's done well in the first half. I thought Ben Rama, and I will slag Ben Rama on this one. I thought he was poor in the, in, uh, in the second half. He was having shots. He was. He's over trying again. I don't understand what he's doing there. Uh, I thought nobody had a good game. I thought Crow was hot and cold. He'd do some really good stuff and get scrappy. Um. And then, you know, get spun or get, like, it just go wandering, do you know what I mean? And I've got mm. a feeling that's the reason why he ain't playing the friend, if I'm being truthfully honest here. Yeah. Um, so, for me, if I was to give a man the match, there's someone who played the whole game and done pretty decent, you've got to give it to either Ashby or Longello. It's one of the two. I thought Ash- For me, I thought Ashby was better. I thought he- some of the stuff he was doing for an 18-year-old, I think he is, or 19-year-old, yeah. was, like, He's more, he's well more advanced, and I can understand when people have said this geezer needs to be in the first team and but like, around the first team. So I'd have no problems having Ashby on, on as right back at West Ham, even like right wing back. I think he could do a job there. Yeah. Like, he looked, he looked apart. I love a lot that faster than I thought. Yeah, and like, what I like about him is he gets the ball and it's over a cross or it's a forward pass. Oh, that but, that cross to Perkins. In the first half, that was a peach. I yeah. think Perkins should have done a little better to, to get on that, but I thought that was an absolute great yeah. pass. Yeah, and I agree. I really do, mate. Um, for me, personally, um, I thought Ariola uh, didn't have really a lot to do, and when he did, he done it well. He's unlucky with a goal. The goal's a screamer. But, um, really yeah, the whole of the back- today. Which was nice. The whole of the back four, like, if you used to give man the match, give it to all the back four because 
no one really put a foot wrong. I thought Baptiste was good, though. I, I liked Baptiste. I don't know what it is. I've seen Elise play live. I've seen him in front of me. Yeah, he does all that sort of stuff. Right? He does all the uh, stuff good and gets in the box and all that. But I don't know. He's just not... Like, I do like that ball playing centre-half. And Baptiste is a man. At, like, and there's, there's a lot of hype. And a hell of a lot of hype around Baptiste that present. You know, both their pa- – the back force passing today under Ravely was very good too. Mm. Longo yeah. played a few good balls. Elise and Baptiste played some good forward lobs. Mm. Harrison, Harrison Ashby was, was brilliant today. Mm. Like, when I look at the pair of them, Ashby and Longello, for me, they were – that's where the threat was coming. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? From them sides. And even the commentator said Longello like, had a really, really good game. And I, I thought, yeah, he had a good game. But I thought Ashby had a good game also. But, uh, yeah, obviously, it's um, it's a loss. But it don't matter because we're already through and we are massive. Uh, what is your final thought, Lucas, before we wrap, son? The, the future looks promising. Hopefully... Um... Hopefully we see one more match this year where we can get some more some more academy guys out there. I really – even though we only saw Forson, that's the one I really wanted to see. I really wanted to see Forson. And I, he's, a, he's a good player, mate. He is. You, you, can, you can just tell, like, he just looks super agile and quick on the ball. Very twitchy is what I like to say, and I like that a lot. Mm. Even though he was on the pitch for four minutes, you when he got the ball the one time from Noble, you can just, like, kind of tell. Like this, this guy can move. Hopefully, mm. he can he can put it all together. But I'm really excited about the academy guys. None of them really put a foot wrong. Besides once that I can recall, like I said, the Ashby Baptiste collision that almost led to a goal. When yeah, he went up to head the ball. That first off, yeah, that's about the only the only thing I can remember. And then, of course, like I'm not I'm not going to get after him on like a few misplaced passes, like. The one to Yarmolenko. Mm. Yarmolenko could have easily gotten to it. Um, <laughs> He's embarrassing, isn't he? Like, Crow, sort of. Crow went the wrong way on one, just a miscommunication, but that happens all the time, mm. even in the first team. So, I, they, in my opinion, if I had to give that back four rating, they put they put in, in my opinion, like a like a eight, close to a nine out of ten. They played. I agree, about mate, as yeah. good as you could against a strong European side playing their best lineup mm. if and saying that i agree i really do um let's be honest you've got to give them a nine i think yeah. because nothing's really come of anything else obviously i think in the second half some of them was knackered yeah. they was literally like exhausted and they was just like going through the motions but no i agree mate right like, there's no point giving the player ratings because for that back line in a competitive game against Let's be honest, a very, very good side who have produced people like Modric, Lovren, uh, Menzukic, people like that. They're no mugs, Argrev, but they really ain't. Do you know what I mean? So let's have a look at the comments before we say bon voyage. Um, Jay Woods is saying, uh, to think Yarmulik was on 150,000 a week's a joke. Uh, oh. Luke's in the house. Uh, Crow, Crow didn't look great, but if he could get more matches, it might be different. I agree. You know, that, that's, you know that's a fair point. He he didn't mm. look too sharp, but I don't. Yeah. I just thought he. Was, I just thought he was average. But what can you expect from somebody that hasn't played? It's an odd one, really, because how can he? How can he get up for a game that means nothing? But I can understand exactly. the youngsters doing. It. I can understand the youngsters doing that because yeah. it's their moment. But I thought. A lot of the sort of, apart from four now, who I thought was decent, I thought Yarmolenko done his usual, nothing. Uh, I thought Flassage was okay, but just okay. Uh, who else was there? Noble was pretty decent tonight, I've got to admit. Uh, Crowell, the only one thing that worries me is he gets spun quite a few times against yeah. that Crow, team. Crowell was just the definition of a, of a six out of ten, honestly. Mm. Which is not terrible. It's not a terrible thing. But again, can't really get up for a game that doesn't mean shit. Yeah. Uh, it's like, he, he, uh, don't stop the, uh, the music is in the house. Evening James, why we pay 30 plus for Vlasic? Should have gone 
in for 20 million for Lingard, no messing about. Um, he ain't no dig at Flassage, Lucas, but I thought he was, I don't know, I just don't, I just do not see it. I've, I've, I haven't seen it from day one. And what worries me now, right, and this is a concern, is where does he play now? Because now Lanzini's coming in. Yeah. I don't know. I thought I thought Vlasic was incredibly positive today. He got he got someone booked going mm. past him. He yeah. showed he showed physicality today. He went down he went down the flank and he absolutely shouldered the hell out of the the, yeah. French, the French center back. And he played he showed some some skills and tricks today. He got past some people. He put in he put in a few decent balls. I'm still not ready mm. to give up on him, but. Again, I agree with you on the fact that we might not have enough time to see yeah. him develop because January. Be honest, though, Lucas, fast. and take your Croatian hat off and take your West Ham hat off, right? Yes. How much time does this man need before, in your opinion, things will start to change? Because for me, this is—I'll say mine, and then I'll let you, like, come back. Mm-hmm is that I've not seen anything to justify the price tag. I've seen a player there who's trying, but I just don't think he's... I ain't going to say... I don't want to be harsh, but I don't think he's good enough for the league, in my opinion. Like, I think he's he's built well, he passes it well, he does the things okay and well, but for that price tag... And I know you can't go on price tags, but... yeah. We're West Ham United, and we can't afford to go out and pay thirty three point five million pounds. I can agree. I can agree on the price tag because because when when you look at the foundation of him, I mm. think he's everything like a manager wants. He he makes he makes the correct pass when you need to. He's not selfish. Mm. Work rate is great. Yeah. Just, it when when it comes to a league like the Premier League, you obviously need that that cutting edge. You need something about you. And sometimes people have it right off the jump, and some people like that it need not doesn't need to develop, but it comes over time with the pace of the game. Mm-hmm. And I I still think like if we want to see the best out of them, it's going to take some game time, and I think it will take probably until next season. But again, I don't think we have that much time because we're get we're a bit injury prone right now. He's mm. probably going to have to step up in either the Arsenal or Burnley game at some point off the bench or start. I mean, I don't think he starts, but you never know what's happening with these players getting hurt. So, and January is coming thick and fast. So, and and we're about to start our our havoc of a of a month on Sunday. Yeah. Um, so Jay Woods says here, yeah, uh, playing Vlasic on the wing just isn't working. Maybe playing as a uh, central attacking midfielder. That's, a, that's another well, issue. I just I've do I think Ben Ra- like do I think Ben Rama can play on the left and cover Cresswell? Mm. I, I think he can, but I still don't think it's like completely wired into his mm. head about that way of playing, which. Like I'm not I'm not gonna bash him for it, but some players are just wired differently like that. Like for now, yeah. for example, for now is all he all he knows is how to work hard. Ben Rama, mm. he doesn't not work hard, but like that's it's just not wired in his not cemented in his brain like for now mm. and Lasich and like Bowen. You know see the I mean? thing is, see the thing is I understand. I understand totally what you're saying, right? And it it's not hate towards Lasich at all yeah. or anything like that. But Certain games this season, I would have thought he would have been the main man. Right, mm-hmm. um, he's the most expensive West Ham player, I believe, on that pitch today. Right, mm-hmm. and he should be. The statement should be: I'm the main man on the pitch. Yeah. I'm thirty three and point five million. I've got to re- impress the manager. And the thing that does it for me, and to say this, is Manuel Lanzini was nowhere to be seen. Start of the season, people last season. And I was doing the YouTube. People wanted Lanzini out, so he weren't good enough. And Lanzini's now starting for West Ham. Yeah. So it just, and if Lingard does come in in January, which is rumored to be happening, I just don't see where where it. Well, I just don't see where he fits, if I'm honest. But hopefully, in the next couple of uh, weeks, next two weeks, we're going to have a lot of games. He's going to have to play. And I think. 
He's got to do I something, Vlasic. The case scenario for Vlasic, in my opinion, would be Yarmolenko gets sold. Yep. Um, maybe a couple. Well, Noble will be leaving as well, obviously. Yeah. So a couple. Once a couple fringe guys go, and like when Lingard comes in, mm. and maybe we don't need Vlasic for, let's say, I w- I won't say don't need, but he doesn't have to play like the very important games. You know what I'm saying? Maybe mm. that time that he's training and we get to the summer and the start of next season, he will be exactly how Ben Rama turned out. We're going to be like, oh, my goodness, this guy is absolute quality. Yeah. But, again, yeah. I, I totally agree with your your side of the fence where we might not have that time. Well, it is. The reason why – yeah, I understand what you're saying. The reason why I say that is because – we're in our best moment now yep. at West Ham, and we need him to perform yeah, now. We need to be on their A game. Yeah, yeah, we need him now. We don't need him next year. And when I keep hearing that word time, nothing against anyone who, like, not, nothing against you, Lucas, or nothing. Yeah. But I keep hearing that word time every five, five minutes. I don't know, you just give him time. I'm like, well, next year we might not be there. Like, I know I said that last year, but these teams, like the Manchester United's, they're going to keep getting it stronger. There's a difference when we get Ben Rama for mm. sub 20 million pounds and Vlasic is, let's, let's say, rumored 33 to 38. We've heard a bunch of numbers, yeah. but 30 million pound player, you got a, there's a little bit more of a higher expectation than a 20 million pound player. So I, t- yeah. I totally get that. And I, do I think he's worth whatever? Let's, let's just call it 33. Do yeah. I think he's worth 33? Mm. How much? Not really. How much would How much would you have paid for him if you was manager of West Ham United and you got you've seen Vlasic play now? How much would you say his valuation is? And again, it, it's tricky too because it all depends on the on the club that's buying him. But for what for West Ham, the West Ham I know, I, I would say about the same as Ben Robin, maybe a tad bit more. I wouldn't have paid over thirty. I would say the mm. most I would have paid is like 27, 26. I think, uh, and it's not me being like biased or nothing. I look at him and I think I, I just see a, a, between 15 and 20. I just don't see it. I really don't. I try to. I try. I'm like, I'm trying to see something there, but I just, I don't know. I don't know. The only one thing I will give him before we sort of come to the end is that he's not really playing with the first team. Yeah. He's not playing with your Bowens and your like your Ben Rams. And, I, and I've always said I would hold my judgment until I see him yeah. with the first team for a couple games, and then then I mm. think everyone can really make a full a full blown accurate opinion. Which again, I don't slate anybody for the way they think. Like I don't totally disagree with any of your Vlasic thoughts, even mm. though I love him. Well, you, you've got someone but, here who says um, Vlasic is a player. I just give him time. Now that's that. It's either time or no time, but whatever it is, it's whatever it is. In the next sort of two weeks, Lucas, and we we're going to have- know if this is a Moyes or a Sullivan buy, which has been a full-on mm. discussion for ever since we bought him. So, mm. yeah, like 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 I said, I think, and like you said, I I think we should hold off on a. a a cemented opinion until we see him with the first team, but I don't disagree with anyone that's well. Ben Rama, Vlasic. Ben Rama goes on the twenty sixth of December, mm-hmm. so we're going to have two games where there's going to be a space there available, where or if not from the start, he's going to be coming off on the bench, like from let the bench see, basically. Let me see real quick what matches those are. They are, and I'll tell you what they are: Southampton. Um, Watford away, and then he's got Palace on the first of uh, Jan. So that's the like he leaves on the twenty sixth, so he ain't going to be playing against um, Southampton. So really, out of them three games, he's going to get on the pitch, I reckon, twice, isn't it? You would, you would think, yeah, yeah, right. So like, and he has to come on and do something, but we will find out, Lucas. We will find out very soon. Do you know what I mean? Yes, we Lucas. Will. Give me your final thought before we go. Um, love what the academy is doing right now. I was very, very happy to see that back four. I was very, I was really, really worried 
that Moyes was going to pull pull a string on us and like start Diop or Masawaku or some. But mm-hmm. I was I was very happy to see the the back four. Um, my only complaint, I really wanted to see David Martin start just just solely because I cannot take yeah. I cannot take the the odds of Ariola going going for a goal kick and he pulls a hammy. Then we are in, if that were to have happened, we would have been incredibly, pardon my French, fucked. Yeah. And yeah. I, I don't like playing the odds. I'm a shame, really. I didn't really think of that in the game. I'm ashamed that Martin didn't come on. I mean, it would have been nice for him to get. I, th- I thought he could, at bare minimum, I think he, I would have liked to see him start the match and then maybe sub on Areola at half or vice yeah. versa. Yeah. I agree, but, mate. Oh, well, he, he puts the club above himself. And we, we, all, we all know David Martin. He's an absolute lad. Love that guy. Mm. 100% mate 100% um, for me my final thought is the future is bright at West Ham it really is I've got, we've got some youngsters there who uh, can do some damage um, Harrison Ashby for me age is, too my goodness yeah uh, Harrison is just all under mid. all under 20 as well besides Elise yeah yeah so the future is bright I must admit and I must say that both uh, right back and left back today were thoroughly top draw for me. Um, I liked Ashby. I thought Ashby was very good, but Longello was top draw. Really, really was. Yeah. And the, even the commentators were saying, you know, you know what? This geezer is like, he's stood out. Right? You know, what Charlie is, Walsh said this too about Ashby. Ashby looks, he looks a little hench. I like that. He, yeah. And what is, he's got a motor on him and all. So yep. he can motor up and down that wing. So. They didn't look tired at all, too, which was phenomenal mm. to see. I don't know if that was debut momentum or adrenaline, but they they really impressed. Like like yeah. you said, nine, nine out of 10 performance. I went eight, but I definitely don't disagree. That was very, very impressive. Mm. Can't ask for much more. Nah, you can't, mate, at all. But uh, yeah. Final thought is the future is very bright at the Academy of Football. And uh, I must admit, there's no excuses now. We have got a left back who can come in and do a job at some point in Longello, get, getting more time on the pitch. I must admit, I do like Ashby. I really do. Uh, I've seen him there. Well, I, I used to see him quite a lot over their training base, which is not far from here. But I've seen him there play against uh, a good side, and he's. He stood out. Tonight. If they really could do that against Dynamo Zagreb, they could definitely do that against a Wofford, Southampton. I, I truly yeah. think that. Yeah. And once upon a time, we had players like Ngakia who come on and, and performed, and we've seen it again tonight. But that we will save that for another night. The Academy of Fullbacks. Love the that. Academy of Fullbacks, Lucas. <laughs> anyway, that's enough from us. That's been Lucas all the way from the US of A. And I will be back soon. Obviously, I'm so proud of the team. I really am. Uh, like the future's bright. The future's bright. And this final comment from Steve: uh, Fair play to the youngsters. That long ghetto looked impressed. Impressive. And Steve, I totally agree with you, mate. Um, I really, really do. The future's very much bright at West Ham at, at present. Now uh, we've got a uh, tough matter of Burnley. On Saturday, so Turf Moor, 2 o'clock, UK time. Uh, was it 10 o'clock your time, is it, Lucas? Nine. Nine o'clock, Lucas. I'll be watching on the mobile, unfortunately, but we're going to well, try and get a full 90 minutes in on the mobile. <laughs> Early start for Lucas, 2 o'clock yes. in the pub for me. But um, anyway, that's enough, that's enough from us. Take care, everyone. All the best. Stay safe out there with COVID and everything. If you're new around here and you like my content, please give me a subscribe. It goes a long way. I really do appreciate everyone who's been subscribing recently. And, yeah, come on, you irons. We are massive. Bye for now, everyone. Thank you.